Okay, so why do so many celebrities have really bad stuff happen to them around the age of 54? You may have seen the video I did previously on the arrest of Diddy and the importance astrologically of the age of 54. Uh, I've since found a lot more out about this and in part thanks to you guys who, uh, some of you guys who left some really great comments on that video and brought other celebrities to my attention. And also thank you to all the patrons who have been supporting me and everything like that so far as well. Thank you. Um, I wanted to share some more, some more case studies of basically the third nodal return. So as I said in the last video, the lunar nodes, and as you've heard me say, and other Vedic astrologers say, Rahu and Ketu are really the karmic ceiling of the chart. Um, they really supersede everything else. You might see someone who has a bunch of planets in fire signs, but then maybe their K2 is in a water sign or a air sign or something. They're going to not be as fiery as you would expect. That's because of these lunar nodes, Rahu and K2, superseding over everything else in the chart. If the sun cannot avoid being blocked out from this eclipse, then neither can you or I. So... The other thing that I point out is that celebrities are kind of like the luminaries, the royalty of the current age. And eclipses are times that are very difficult for all of us, but especially for the royalty or the, the luminaries, the people we look to who are normally shining, like the sun and moon. That's, the sun and moon are the things that get eclipsed. So ever since ancient Babylonian times, you know, it was known that when there's a solar eclipse, the king will fall. Well, in modern days, that is celebrities falling a lot of time. But they're just sort of a symbol and a representation of what goes on for all of us, okay? So, as we explained, this last eclipse cycle, March of 2024, on the exact night of the eclipse, uh, Diddy's house got raided. And then six months later, on the exact night of the, of the next lunar eclipse, he, he gets arrested and indicted. Now this is especially significant because the at 50, he was 54 years old and the lunar nodes had basically returned again, the second, no, the third time. So the lunar nodes, where they're at when you're born, they show where you will get eclipsed, where you'll get hung up the most and have the craziest, most extreme karmas. And then at 18, they returned to where they were. So that's part of why we kind of go wild at the age of 18 or become real adults and mature a great deal. And then at around 27 is like the half beat. So that's why you've heard of the 27 club. You know what I mean? That's these half beats are important, but not as important. But so after 27, and it's also because Mars matures at 28, which Western astrologers don't know anything about, but we Vedic astrologers know all about that. So that's if you've got an afflicted Mars, that's also why so many people die right before 28. Um, but then 36 to 37 is the second lunar node, the second nodal return, which is a big deal. I, uh, man, I mean, I, I just went through my second nodal return and it has been, the last year has been the most insane year of growth, but also trauma, crazy stuff. I honestly could tell a pretty crazy story about my own nodal return eclipse cycle from last year, if you guys would be curious, but it's, so real that it's almost like almost too real to share um but the the yeah so the 36 is really important and then if you've been doing really well with your karma at that 36 point it's almost like you get a whole new life and a lot of your nodal issues are like little like lightened but if you've been doing really bad they get worse um, Laura Barat, a really great colleague astrologer of mine, talked, told me about this a lot, how after her nodal return, it was like she was a totally different person. And she even does readings based off of that. But I don't understand that entirely because it's so hard to know exactly where the nodes are at. So it would be hard to cast a chart for that exact nodal return. But she's done that and I've experimented with it as well. Um, it probably is very significant, but I just can't report back fully because I don't know for sure yet. Now, after that, 
you're going and going and going, and then at 54, you have the third lunar nodal return, the third Rahu and Ketu return. And so if you've been working really hard with your karma and healing, you get more rewards at this time and profound spiritual growth, like yogis and people have a lot of breakthroughs at that time, but then for people who are maybe going too hard and overindulging in the worldly life and in the worldly pleasures and these celebrities who've let their egos get out of hand and become toxic human beings, they have great falls from heights at this time. So we covered Puff Daddy in depth, but these are some of the other guys that have had big falls. And thank you for the to people who commented and shared a lot of these that I didn't catch. R. Kelly, Mel Gibson, Matthew Perry, Will Smith, and even Brett Favre, and this comedian David A. Arnold, and also Jim Carrey. Some of these are really in-depth and really wild and would take more than a few videos to cover all the juicy details. Um, if you would like to see more of the, you know, more breakdowns of this, let me know. If no one comments, I'll just leave it alone and move on to the next thing. But Jay-Z is 55, and so is Jennifer Lopez. So they have been implicated in this stuff quite a bit. There was another rapper who spoke out saying some things about Jay-Z and was immediately given a cease and desist, and Piers Morgan had to remove the interview. Um, from Jay-Z and Beyonce's lawyers. So that's really juicy, but I'm not, you know, I don't want to get myself in trouble legally, but I would say enjoy your Jay-Z music while you can, if you're a fan of his, because it's very, it's looking kind of uh, like the crosshairs might be on him next, and at 55, he's just had or just going through his nodal return as well. So we might see some tough falls from him if they haven't already happened. Now, the other big one was R. Kelly. He fell and he was convicted right at the age of 54 of his horrible atro atrocities. But Matthew Perry, Matthew Perry was just last year on October 23, 2023. Um, he was leaving a lot of weird cryptic Instagram posts and things like calling himself Matman like he's Batman and talking about the moon and all this like lots of posts about the moon and then he drowns on a lunar eclipse drowning as we know is ruled by the moon he was in a hot tub luxury ruled by the moon in water um, really 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 sad and really really tragic and the police are actually investigating him and this and they actually there's a lot of evidence that this was not an accident actually that he was killed and that a lot of people think that um so that's very interesting um it seems and this is what uh, i've said for years how during eclipse seasons we have it's like you accidentally can give more permission to the negative forces to mess with you. Like you can accidentally invite negative greetings, as some people call it, and healers and psychics and intuitives all know about this, but this is also why the darker witches and people like to do their spells and things around the eclipse because they have more, you, black magic essentially works stronger and works more powerfully during eclipse season. <sighs> Yeah, um, so I feel for him, I don't know what was going on there, um, but it seems really strange and, and concerning. And if you guys have any other additional info on Matthew Perry, f f please feel free to share it. I stumbled upon one really crazy video breaking down the numerology and the symbolism of him and his death, and it's insane, and I'll share it with you below in the comments, and you can think for yourself on it. It is freaky. Now then there's the Will Smith thing. So Will Smith, one of the most beloved actors of all, at 54 was when he did that famous slap when he slapped Chris Rock. And that was a huge fall from a height for him. And there was a lot of really weird, eclipsy, like suspicious things going on around that. Namely the fact that he slapped her over the joke about alopecia and his wife. And then if you look into what company was sponsoring that event, that company also was coming out with an alopecia treatment. 
So it's almost like, did is he just an out of work actor that is now getting paid to do acting in the real world outside of movies? And what of was this staged? What what about this? You know, because there's a lot of weird things about that scene staged. Um, and so Rahu is illusions. Rahu, Rahu represents illusions, right? So that's also why this like Hollywood is so riddled with this Rahu stuff, you know. So anyways, that was a huge fall for him, you know, at the age of 54, once again, and it was like really big news. And Will Smith was one of these people who was like really, really, really well liked and really popular. Another one that happened way back in 2010 was Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson was a huge deal and he had his big fall from grace with Hollywood in 2010 when he left that really, really intense voicemail to his wife and then that was leaked and um, so yeah that guy had a major uh, just like he was blacklisted from Hollywood for over a decade and he was in his third nodal return so this should happen maybe once or twice coincidentally but this happens way too often oh and Mel Gibson's fall from a height was actually during eclipse season. Um, there was, yeah, so that that's also very important to note, note. His did happen right during eclipse season. So it seems like the really biggest, the craziest ones are definitely falls that happen in line with the eclipse season. But at the same time, at any time during the age of 54, I would say a celebrity and 55, a celebrity needs to be very careful, right? If they were to come to me for... A reading or for advice then also a commenter shared that Brett Favre or Brett Favre I'm one of those <laughs> can't ever pronounce that name properly but the professional football player he had some he's 54 and he just got into some sort of welfare spending scandal and now he has Parkinson's disease which is a dramatic change for like a superhero football player kind of guy alpha male you know I don't know much about football, so I didn't go into that. Just to be honest, uh, thank you to the commenter who shared that, but that just adds to this. So if any of you guys have any other thoughts to share on that, please do, but I don't know a lot about him. I didn't look at his chart or anything, but that's another one. And this comedian, David A. Arnold, passed away at 54, right at the height of his career. He had a random heart attack and died, and it was the same day that Queen Elizabeth died as well. Um, that was September 7th, 2022. He did not die during the eclipse season. Like during, so, so he, he didn't, this, his death was not as perfectly lined up as like the Matthew Perry and the Diddy and these other ones. But still, this guy was at the height of his career and he just randomly has a heart attack and dies at 54. So that's tragic. And that's very terrible, very lunar node Rahu type thing. But he did not die during that eclipse season and so it's not like you you know the best example would be that but it's not like that has to happen every time there are probably transits or whatever like i don't know if will smith's thing actually happened it happened just a little bit before the eclipse season or it was just starting to happen um, on a positive note the artist prince he had this crazy battle with for his music rights and he is a very conscious, like, you know, he was a pretty conscious artist and was one of those ones that didn't get too caught up in Hollywood and the Rahuvian illusions, right? So what's wild is the whole reason he had to change his name to the artist formerly known as Prince was because the Warner Brothers or whatever music company was owned his name and would make money off of any music he would make as Prince. So he had to change that and this in this crazy legal battle just to own the rights to his own music and that went for 18 years and at 54 18 years later a nodal return he finally got to own the rights to his music again and he finally got like a really good uh he he re-signed with warner brothers on april 18th 2014 after an 18 year split um and so that was that's a cool example, you know, just to show how when people are consciously working with their nodes and things like Prince was known to, to be doing. Yeah, that's a really that's a good example of it. And supposedly 
now it's starting to come out that Prince would have these parties that were like free artist collaboration parties with no one from the music industry involved where artists could just be free to collaborate. A lot of people are thinking he was he started those parties as the antithesis of Diddy's freak off parties, which you know what I mean? So a lot of people think he was like very hip and very weird, all these things. He like never wanted to be photographed with Diddy or any of these people. You know, there's only like one photograph of him where he was just happened to be sitting next to him. So it's really interesting. Um, and just and Prince has a profoundly strong chart from Tropical Vedic Astrology too, just to be right, fair. Now, uh, the best example for saved it for last, um, Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey, fascinating character. You know, he uh, he started to have his own awakenings and things through, uh, I guess, being in the movie The Truman Show and then studying Eckhart Tolle and then he studied the Gita and all this stuff. So, you know, um, on the one hand, he seems like a guy we would all really love, but uh, it's hard to tell with this celebrity world, right? So what's interesting is that when Jim Carrey was 53 years and eight months old, his girlfriend died and people claimed he killed her. And it's a very suspicious thing because he dated her for a long time and then they broke up and then he, she married um, her, her, her husband and then later on she commits suicide and they're like, no one around her thinks she would ever have committed suicide. And her husband filed an illegal death lawsuit claiming that Jim Carrey killed her and that he had surveillance cameras set up around her property and was like waiting and filming and watching and knew that she hadn't left her house for days and had must have finally died and all this stuff and uh, you can read the details about this online um, but it was claimed that the coroner said ruled that she took her own life, but coroners can be very corrupt and it's so easy to become a coroner. And so that's, it's hard to say about that. Um, the, her husband feels that he wanted her dead because it was starting to harm his reputation and that he framed it as a suicide. He could have had, you see, this is the thing where he could have been like just hiring Hollywood manager people wanting to fix the problem and then they deal with it. And then, then he's a, he's totally like, what have I done sort of thing. But this woman who passed, who was, who committed suicide or was murdered, her mother sued Jim Carrey for a wrongful death, um, lawsuit and claimed that he gave her drugs under a fake prescription name even. And gave her three different STDs and um, lied about it and then dumped her in order to keep his image well crafted. So this is just different people's claims, uh, their alleged claims. I don't know, really. And I've not looked into this enough, but it's just I was just kind of like stumbling upon a YouTube video where they were talking about this and it was like, oh, let's look up how old he is. Wow, he's 54 when this happens. Oh, my God. So yeah, uh, at 53 and a half is when she died. And then at 54 was when all the lawsuits and all the things came up about with Jim Carrey. And then by 2017, the next year at 55, he's showing up at those award shows, making all those existential comments, seeming like a sad puppy dog, like someone, you know, ran over his favorite toy or something. And it's like, whoa, what happened to you? Um, so what happened was his third lunar node return, his third Rahu K2 return. So this, yeah, this video is kind of, um, you know, just an observation from celebrities. But of course, if you're around 54 or 55, it might be a good time for you to get a reading or check in with your karma, uh, you know, and just kind of like make sure you're doing everything you can do. Uh, celebrities, again, live the most extreme lives, and so they get the sting of the serpentine Rahu and K2 that bite, they get bit the most, you know? Uh, and so especially if you have clients who are like 54 or 55 around eclipse season, you really want to be, they need to be working on their stuff as much as they can and be as conscious as they can and watch out for negative invitations or negative greetings and things like that. Um, that would be at least some simple basic advice you could give them. But the other thing is that just like how some of these people did not die during eclipse season, 
eclipses have long-term effects and i noticed this from my lunar node return like literally the entire year of of 36 and 37 has been like rahu and k2 influential and so it's or here's a good way to think of it Ra a snake's head can strike long after it's been cut off so that's why it's not just eclipse season but really all of the age of 54 is an important year or 54 to 55 the entire time those lunar nodes are back in the same sign that they were when you were born yes a snake's head can bite long after it's been cut off and that's a true fact you can look that up as well you can cut the head off of a snake and it can still bite you for a long time after uh, yeah so if you guys like this video um you i would love it if any of you guys want to support my channel and help me continue to make videos and content like this you can just subscribe to patreon five dollars a month it's just like buying me a coffee or a chai really uh, I also have a one-time option, just buy me a coffee, just one-time single option. There's a link down below. And then if you're really into astrology, I strongly urge studying astrology with me via Patreon. You get access to a full Jyotish course, an ongoing Nakshatra course, all kind of other course, a Rahu and K2 course. You get a monthly free forecast and you get discounted tutoring deal, which is really good. Normally it's $50 an hour to do a one hour tutoring one-on-one -on -one session with me, but if you're studying with me, it's only 39 USD per hour. And that's when you really become a great astrologer is, you know, you study my course for a month, you'll have a bunch of questions. Then we set up an hourly session and kind of go through it. And I really get to see what you're learning and what you're not and help you one-on-one -on -one in the real way that astrology was learned learned in the one-on-one -on -one oral tradition so really i'm um i'm really happy about teaching astrology more and i'm looking for more students so if any of you guys are interested in that just let me know and if not thank you for watching and i hope you have a wonderful day take care